Hello and welcome to a long-awaited update, it's been a long time coming, about the S92 and the autopilot system that we're working on. Here you can see we are in X-Plane 10 currently. I'm working on something else uh, on my X-Plane 11 system at the moment. So right now we're just working on autopilot related things in the S92 in X-Plane 10 using the 2D panel, as you'll see here. <laughs> the 2D panel is just an easy way for me to have all the different buttons and controls that I need to use available in a way where I don't have to look for them in the 3D cockpit. So uh, really just for ease of development. So right now, the autopilot plugin is flying the helicopter. So I'm not touching the stick, the pedals, the collective or anything. It's doing everything right now. The biggest challenge that we faced is probably related to the different way that the flight controls need to be manipulated to command hover flight versus cruising flight. Uh, when we're hovering like we kind of are now, changing the heading is really just a matter of uh, pushing the pedal, mashing down one of the anti-torque pedals to make the tail rotor turn you in that direction. Whereas in cruise flight, if you're going 120 knots, uh, it's more like an airplane, like a fixed wing plane. You wouldn't just mash down the rudder pedal. To, if you wanted to turn, you would have to roll uh, the aircraft and use some of the lift being generated by the wings to kind of turn your momentum and your flight path and your the course that you're actually taking to go in that direction. So the biggest challenge here or one, one of the biggest challenges is uh, coding a gradient handoff that needs to, to occur between hover flight control inputs and cruise flight control inputs. And basically that is not something that can happen in a sort of a binary way where from one moment you're just in hover mode, the next moment you're in cruise mode. Uh, it's something that happen has to happen and be accounted for gradually because, for example, like we're going four and a half knots right now. So just because it's not zero doesn't mean that we should be in cruise mode. We're, right now, the, the only way you would really need to turn your direction for the most part is with the tail rotor. So if we were going 10 knots, though, or 20, or 30, or 19, or 35, or 36. There's an ever so slightly change every different knot that you're going that the, the balance of exactly how much of the turn is based on tail rotor versus rolling needs to change. So, uh, and then there's other stuff too, like if you're dealing with wind, um, if the weight of the helicopter is different, and you need more torque in the main rotor, then you need more tail rotor, and more tail rotor means more tail rotor thrust, which is the reason right now that we're actually sliding to the right, if you can tell. Um, that's because the tail rotor is fighting to maintain this heading, and as a result of that, pushing the entire aircraft to the right. So that's yet another complication that the autopilot needs to deal with, is both wind, either weather atmospheric related wind pushing the helicopter or wind in the sense of thrust being created by the tail rotor or even the main rotor in certain situations. The autopilot needs to both sense, sense those things happening and then come up with a way to <laughs> counteract it if that's what the person flying is wants it to do. And then it needs to figure out how to do that based on how fast or how slow the helicopters go. It's just, uh, I I knew that it would be a complicated undertaking to try to program a four axis autopilot, um, which is probably why a four axis, well, one of the reasons why a real four axis autopilot is so expensive and difficult to certify and um, to acquire in the real world. So, yeah, I knew it was going to be a challenge, but it's uh, even mo even more challenging and even more interrelated nuances that um, are the, the cause of many hours and days and weeks of, of headaches trying to 
figure out how to deal with them. Uh, and once we reach a point where we're close to reliable, uh, predictable, relatively realistic functionality of the system, then uh, I can have a much clearer sense of when exactly this update can be released and enjoyed uh, because uh, we could just release it, but uh, it's not going to be a whole lot of fun or very usable beyond the new aesthetic improvements. So I'll, I'll just have to keep you, keep you posted and hopefully soon we'll have an idea of exactly when this will be ready. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.